Hi everyone, and welcome to the new session of the research seminar series hosted by Nomadic Labs. Today's speaker is Alain Mepsou, CTO of Functory and uh, Formal Methods and Blockchain Research Engineer. So Alain will talk uh, today about testing consensus protocols with Miten. Alain and his colleagues design and develop Miten to address a simple problem that of playing complex scenarios of Thunderbake on the actual implementation of the protocol in Tezos. So uh, feel free to ask your question directly on the chat and the Q&A will happen at the end uh, of the presentation. So let's start with the video. Hello, my name is Alain Mepsou from uh, Functory and today I'm going to be talking about testing consensus protocols with Bitten. Okay, so our goal here is to replay tricky scenarios for Tenderbake consensus implementation in Tezos. So we design and develop Mitten to address a simple problem, uh, that of playing complex scenarios of Tenderbake. So this is the upcoming distributed consensus protocol uh, in Tezos, and we want to test it on the actual implementation of uh, the protocol in Tezos. Uh, so this protocol, uh, this um, consensus uh, algorithms are notoriously tricky and hard to test in realistic settings because they involve a lot of uh, asynchronous communication and so on. Uh, further goal uh, of this work is to extract the model checking traces from the uh, TLA model of Tenderbake and verify the, the execution on the implementation to make sure the traces that we extract are actual traces of the protocol. So our approach which we believe is minimally intrusive, is also uh, modular and reusable for other use cases, and works by uh, essentially controlling the propagation of consensus messages uh, by controlling both uh, block propagation and mempool operations. Uh, and this is the way uh, consensus messages are exchanged in the Tenderbeck protocol in Tezos. Uh, so this machinery is implemented uh, as a man-in-the-middle proxy, so this is uh, what Mitten is. Uh, and for that, we reuse the peer-to-peer -peer layer of Tezos, which allows us to communicate with Tezos node uh, almost for free. Uh, so the proxy intercepts messages uh, that are uh, that come from one node that are de destined to another, another one, and can perform uh, the following actions. So it can uh, drop the message, uh, forward the message to an Italian recipient, or it can also delay the message by a certain amount of time, or can delay the message uh, after another message uh, from another node, say, has, uh, has, has been uh, propagated. Or we can also possibly modify the message if we want to. Uh, so Mitten can be used for several things. The first one is to monitor messages exchanged by participants on the given peer-to-peer -peer Tezos network. Uh, so this, is can, this can be useful, for instance, if we want to uh, see what is going on in the network. Uh, we can also see, uh, use it to uh, simulate an imperfect network where we can introduce delays and loss of messages. And we, can, we can even have clock drifts for uh, bakers and their nodes. And the third one, which we are interested in here, is uh, to play and replay scenarios which we express in a term of message passing uh, in a specialized la language that uh, we developed and uh, we'll talk uh, about that a little bit later. Uh, so Tezos nodes are, are connected to Mitten, our actual uh, real nodes, and execute uh, the real Tezos code, which means that the instrumentation on Tezos is almost nil, and any scenario that can be played with Mitten can also happen in real life on the real Tezos network, provided uh, that we are uh, actually uh, encountering the same uh, settings that we have in the scenario. So the architecture of uh, Mitten is the following one. Uh, so in the middle you can see uh, this big circle which represents Mitten, uh, and in the middle of this circle, there's this uh, sort of factory uh, which is fed a scroll, and this scroll is, stands for the, the scenario. So, uh, Mitten uh, takes as input a scenario, and, uh, and uh, that's how the proxy works. And so, here in, in this case, we can see that we have uh, three nodes which are represented by those computers. There's one uh, behind me. Uh, so, there's a red one, the red node on port 71. Uh, and uh, the edges here that you see on color, they represent uh, TCP uh, connections. So the, the red node wants to communicate with the, with the green and blue nodes and exchange mess messages, but they don't communicate uh, uh, through their uh, actual ports, so they all communicate through the, the, the Mitten proxy. So for instance, the red node sees uh, the green node through port 82 instead of seeing through the port 80, uh, 72. Um, 
And so when he wants to send a message to uh, the green node, he will uh, send it to Miten, which effectively means that Miten here can see everything that's going on in the network. Uh, so in, in our uh, example here, there's the, uh, the, group, the red node that proposes a block B1. And so it's, this is broadcast to all its neighbors. And so it goes to the to meet and pro, to the meet and proxy, uh, and one is destined to uh, the blue node, which is the first one. But here in this case, the scenario tells us we have to uh, discard this node and the, the, this uh, this message. And uh, the second one is uh, destined to the green node, and here uh, the scenario tells us that this can go through. So this is basically how meet and works, just by forwarding messages uh, or discarding them or delaying them, uh, depending on the input scenario. So the scenarios I described uh, as a series of steps uh, which say uh, which messages sh should be forwarded and uh, the, the playing of the scenarios works essentially by pattern matching these messages on uh, the given steps of the message. So when a message is matched, it is forwarded and uh, messages that are not matched are discarded. But they are not really thrown away really, which we, we we keep them for, for a little while because they can be reconsidered under certain conditions. Uh, the, the steps can contain constants, which, uh, for instance, the, the, a name of a baker or uh, a level uh, or a round, or also variables, free variables, and catch all patterns. We can also have constraints on patterns, for instance, if we have, uh, want to have arithmetic relations between uh, variable levels that describe levels. Uh, so the scenario uh, language is uh, uh, described by this small grammar. So the first uh, first line uh, at the beginning gives us the syntax for the constants. Uh, so constant can be uh, a name of a node here, an n and then a string. It can be a number for either the rounds or the levels, or it can be a, a hash, a payload hash that starts with bh. Uh, the variables are uh, an underscore for a catch-all pattern. Um, a string for a free variable or a, a variable can also be bound by constant in which case we represent it by simply the constant. Um, the steps are, uh, so there are three ele elementary steps which is uh, the proposal, uh, an endorsement and a, uh, sorry, a pre-endorsement and an endorsement and uh, those three uh, elementary steps are parameterized by five variables. The first one being the baker, the second one the level, the third one is the round, and then we have the payload hash, and finally the destination of the message. We can also uh, combine uh, messages with uh, those combinators. So the first uh, combinator is the conjunction of messages, so it's not the conjunction in a uh, propositional sense, it's the uh, uh, conjunction with a special special meaning to attached to it. Uh, and there's the disjunction, and also this arrow with the question mark at the end, which uh, denotes a, a kind of loop which waits for a, a specific uh, message to be matched. We have a negation of messages and a sequence of messages, which are uh, basically a sequence of steps. Uh, each step uh, can be uh, augmented with a pre and post condition, with the uh, added nuance that uh, the post condition is not really a post condition of, on the execution of the step, but it's a post condition on the forwarding of the message. So. Uh, usually we are not really interested in both the precondition or the postcondition. We want either the precondition if we want to perform some checks before the message is forwarded, or we can do some check afterwards, but it's uh, more to, to perform actions. So now, uh, right now, the, 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 this DSL is implemented as a set of OCaml primitives, which means that the scenarios they are actually written as OCaml programs and they are compiled to OCaml binaries uh, that take care of uh, uh, basically everything for us. So. If I write a scenario in Mitten, uh, then I get a program uh, which is compiled into a binary, and I, if I run that, it's, uh, it will spawn the, the, the network with the configuration that I described, and uh, play the scenario, and I, I will see the, the output on the, on the screen. So here is how we write uh, variables and constants. Uh, and so the free variables are just a free constructor with a, the string. A constant um, is a, is a is a, a bound variable, so in this case we have b1 which is uh, bound to the string b, so the baker b. We have this catch-all uh, pattern which is uh, two underscores. So for level and rounds there are special functions to construct uh, construct them, so here we declare uh, the level uh, variable for the level 3 and variable for the round 0. 
and pattern matching by the variables to values in the rest of the scenario. So if I want to write uh, elementary steps, so here is uh, an example of a step which matches a proposal message from a Baker uh, from Baker one at level three and round zero, and whose payload hash is payload p. So payload p can be a, a variable, for instance, um, and uh, whose destination is Baker two. So in this case, it would be the node on which Baker two uh, is uh, associated. Uh, this is a similar syntax for the pre endorsement and the endorsements. Uh, and here is a, combina a combinator for the conjunction. So if I say uh, I have a, a step, the first step here is a proposal at level one. So it's a step that matches a proposal at level one. Second one is a step that matches a proposal at level two. And the conjunction of the two is a step which is matched uh, whenever the first one is matched and the second one is matched in any order. So for it to be matched, I need to have both a proposal at level one and a proposal at level two. So I can have the proposal at level two before or the proposal at level one before. It doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, the, the syntax here, which says uh, propose B, R, L, and then with a list of destination, this is actually just a syntactic sugar for having this uh, conjunction of uh, proposal from, from B to B1, from B to B2, and from B to B3. Uh, so it's sometimes simpler to write them like that. Um, we have also this disjunction. So here it's a proposal, so I have a, a step which matches a proposal at round zero. To, from anyone to anyone, and a, uh, a step that matches a proposal at round one. And so if I write the disjunction of these two steps, then I have a step which uh, matches either a proposal at round zero or a proposal at round one. Uh, and the negation, so here we have a negation of a proposal from B1. Uh, so this will match any message which is not a proposal from B1. So it can match, uh, for instance, any endorsement or pre-endorsement, or say a proposal from B2. Uh, and this is how we write the, the sequence, so it's, in, it, it's written with a, a function uh, sec and, uh, and a list uh, whose uh, elements are uh, steps. So in this case we have a, a sequence of a proposal from B1 to B2, of a pre-endorsement uh, at the same level and round from uh, B1 to B2, and a pre-endorsement from, uh, from basically the same block from B2 to B1. So this sequence effectively imposes an order of messages, but more than that, it effectively reorders messages because there's nothing that prevents Mitten from say re receiving the pre-endorsement from B2 uh, before the one from B1. It's just that the one from B1 to B2 will be forwarded before the one from B2 to B1 by the scenario player. And this is how we write uh, uh, loops or uh, steps that wait for uh, something to happen. So here uh, this arrow with this question mark and, uh, and then the, the on the right hand side we have a, uh, a step which matches any proposal and on the left hand side we have uh, the, a step which will be matched whenever this, this, uh, the one on the right is not matched. So for instance uh, here uh, this step uh, uh, waits for a proposal to happen and in, in between uh, while it's waiting for this proposal to happen it will forward any messages uh, which match either a pre-endorsement or an endorsement. Writing assertions in Mitten is also possible. We have this add spec function, which for which we give it a list of checks uh, as a precondition pre and a list of checks as a post condition, and, and with a step it gives us another step with this spec added. Each check can be of three different kinds. The first one is uh, an execution of a function. The second one is a, an actual check, and the first, the last one is an asynchronous check. So the execution of a, func of a function is, is just a, a function which takes as argument the message that, is, that, is, that, that was used to match the, the given step and also the step and uh, returns unit in this case in, in this uh, error mode. Uh, the, first the second one is a, a check. So we have a string and we tell also Mitten if we want the scenario to step if it fails. And the function that we give it is a, a something that also takes the message and the step and returns a boolean if this check is satisfied or not. And the asynchronous check is for uh, checks on which we expect the computation to be long and for, for which we don't want the scenario to be uh, stopped because of that. Uh, but the result of the check will still be uh, uh, reported at the end. 
So in this case, uh, here it is the, the weight uh, function is actually a shorthand to tell Newton that we are waiting for a message and while we wait for this message, we let any other message go through. So here we wait for a proposal of B1 at level 5 and we add the specification which has a single check as a precondition that uh, the node must have the same level as the proposal it's actually uh, sending. Uh, so we have this helper function that allows us to retrieve the head level from a node, so in this case B1, so we get L, and then we just check that L is equal to 5. When we write scenario, so there's a small library to build scenarios, and there's this function, uh, run scenario, for which, uh, to which we give a scenario, and uh, we have to call that at top level, and if we call that uh, in, a, in a module and compile, compile that with the Ocamel compiler, then we will get an executable which runs the meeting scenario and spawns the network, etc. Um, a scenario is given by a list of nodes, and, a list, and each node has a name which must be unique because it's also used as, uh, as constants, for instance, and to, to describe the different steps. We must tell the, the, the node if we associate the baker to it, in which case the baker will also be started, and we can give it a drift, a clock drift. So each drift is uh, described by an additive factor and a multiplica multiplicative factor. Sorry. And the time for a node is uh, basically the time of the system uh, multiplied by, by this multiplicative factor and uh, with, an, with this uh, additive factor added at the end. So if I want uh, a specific node or baker to be late, I will have um, uh, an additive factor that's positive and say if I want uh, uh, the clock of a baker to be faster than the other ones, I can put a multiplicative factor that's smaller than one. Uh, we, we also have uh, parameters for the scenario, which uh, basically describe the parameters of the network, including the, the delegate selection and uh, the consensus uh, uh, quorums and, uh, the, and so on. Uh, there are the constraints and uh, the arithmetic constraints, and uh, some global invariants, which we can also add here. For instance, uh, if we have an invariant that we want to check for every message, we don't want to add this step to every, as this uh, spec to every step, so we have a, a system invariant that we can write here. And the code is a, a step, which is also itself a combination of steps. Uh, so here is a simple scenario example that I will uh, show you uh, in Mitten. So this scenario example checks that uh, bakers should reconsider the proposals that are in the future. So if a baker does not keep proposals that, that it considers in the future for letter processing, it will never see it and it can miss participation in the consensus. So let's say we have B1, which is a node, and a baker, with a clock which is ahead by 2 seconds. And B2, B3, B4 have the same clock, which will be the clock of my computer. And the box for B1 will still systematically be considered in the future by others, because they will always have a timestamp that's in the future when they receive it. And if the proposal is within the same round, the others should pre under it, and that's what uh, then the bake does. And we will check that uh, with, uh, with Mitten. So here is the example written in Mitten. So at the beginning, I, I uh, declare this, uh, these four nodes with, the, with their names, and I give them, uh, well, actually, three, four nodes and four bakers, and I give them, uh, uh, so I, and I, I also uh, declare variables, which are actually bound uh, to uh, this, uh, this, this, uh, this constants. C4 is a free variable. Uh, the nodes of my system will be the node B2, the node B1 with this uh, drift, so here, uh, this says that uh, uh, because the additive factor is 2, it's, it's, uh, the, the, the clock of B1 will be in advance uh, of uh, 2 seconds. Uh, the node uh, B3 and the node B4. Uh, the parameters of uh, my, uh, my network uh, will be uh, the default one, where I change the delegate selection with the wrong robin. Um, and here, I'm uh, actually looking at level 3 and 4, and I say that uh, B1 is the baker of uh, round 0, B2 is the baker of uh, round 1, and B3 of round 3, and B4, sorry, B3 of round <laughs> uh, 2, and B4 of round 3. And uh, this also gives me the, um, the committee for this uh, specific level. Uh, and for the level 4, that now B2 is the baker at uh, round 0. So the committee is formed. And the quorum is also 4, so which means that uh, 
uh, everybody must uh, vote and uh, everybody must agree for a pronouncement quorum to be reached and for the endorsement quorum to be reached as well. Uh, we also can uh, uh, give the round durations. So here I say that uh, the first one will be three seconds and the fourth one will be four seconds. And we can also uh, give um, different values if we are running in the CI of Tezos. So meet, we can run uh, meet on the, on the CI of Tezos to make sure that we are not breaking anything. But uh, because the CI uh, is running on a shared, uh, shared machines, then uh, we cannot have the same performance than, uh, on a local machine. Uh, this is a just a small declaration, a small, small constant to, to have all the, the, the bakers in, in a single list, which would be useful for the, for, the, for the scenario. And I have a reference, which is called the future block considered, which is initially set to false, and then uh, have the code of the scenario. So the scenario uh, starts by waiting for a proposal uh, from B2 at level 5, and this proposal must be sent to all the other bakers. Once this is matched, then uh, the scenario tells us to wait for a proposal from B1 at level 4 and round 0 with the uh, payload hash C4, and this, is, this also must be uh, forwarded to all the other um, bakers. And uh, we have this small post condition which uh, is sort of a safety check, uh, or a canary check here, and we check that the proposal is actually really in the future. Uh, and so when we receive this message, so it has to be a proposal, and uh, we check that uh, the timestamp of the, of the block here is uh, greater than the time of, my of, uh, of the system. And once this is done, uh, we are waiting for uh, message which match a step that actually goes down here. So it's a disjunction of either this first thing or the second one. So the first uh, step is uh, we are waiting for both uh, uh, for both a pre-announcement from B2, from B3 and also from B4 at level 4 and 1, 0 and with payload hash C4. So basically we are waiting uh, for uh, B2, B3 and B4 to pre understand the block that was proposed uh, by B1 before. And uh, once we have uh, matched these, then we can say that the future block was actually reconsidered. So here the, the spec basically is just a, a function that executes this code and, and sets the, our reference to true. But uh, this, this disjunction is... Uh, so we also want to stop the scenario if we will uh, reach level 5. And at the end of the, the scenario, we check that uh, uh, future block considered was set to true during the, the execution of the scenario, which would mean that B2, B3, and B4 would have pre the, the block that was in the future. So we, uh, we declare the scenario with the nodes, the parameters, the constraints, the, so we have everything together with the code. So here there's no timeout for the, for the, the scenario, but we can have one if we want to. Uh, and so this, this I will talk about later, and we have no system invariance, and we just say run, uh, run scenario, and this will hopefully run the scenario, which I will uh, do right now. So Mitten here is uh, starting the network. So it's putting the data and the logs uh, in a folder that, that it displays, so we can later inspect them if we want to. Uh, <coughs> and now we can see the, the scenario sort of uh, unrolling before our eyes. The present uh, stands for uh, fresh uh, proposals. The boxes are for um, uh, real proposals. Uh, the thumbs up are for pre endorsements and the uh, green check marks are for endorsements. So at level 3, um, B2 is the only one in the committee, so is uh, proposing uh, to the other bakers and nodes. But he's also pre endorsing and uh, endorsing uh, all by himself. So everybody reaches uh, the, the consensus and see this endorsement quorum and move on to the next step. And so here we can see here actually that B1 proposes uh, at level 4 and round 0, 2 B3, B4, and B2. And the next, uh, oops, sorry, the next uh, message that are exchanges are. Uh, Pre-endorsement messages from B1 to B2 and B3 and B4. So B1 just pre-endorses his own 
proposal. And then we have the pre-endorsement from B4, from B3, and uh, from B2, which is uh, what we've been uh, waiting for. So the, we can see the results at the end. Uh, so this uh, gives us the, the, the fact that uh, the others we consider the future block, and uh, also the check that uh, the proposal was really in the future. Let's go back to the slides. So this is it for the simple scenario. So the baker in tender bake is a bit specific in that exchanging messages or votes does not go through communication between the bakers themselves, but instead the, it goes through commu communication between the nodes and uh, between uh, and they exchange uh, mempools. They exchange their messages by exchanging their mempool. So on the left here we have a baker with a node and we are lo only looking at the prevalidator and the mempool of the node. And so the baker sends operations to the node, to the prevalidator, which are then, uh, once prevalidated, put into the mempool. And then the baker also reads the operation that it gets from the mempool. So the mempool can get uh, operations that are injected to, to the node, or it can also get operations that uh, come from the network from somewhere else. So let's, and on the right, we have a, no, also another baker that's, uh, that's with another node in the network. So let's say we have an endorsement. Uh, that's produced by this baker, so it goes through the prevalidator and then in the mempool, but it does not go through the other baker. So at this point, the mempool is exchanged, so not really like that, but there's communication that goes on, and the, the second node will see the mempool of the, the other node, and Mitten sees the exchanges of mempool, so it's a way for Mitten here to act on these uh, mempools and to act on the messages that are in the mempool, so we can block or forward the endorsement that way. And uh, the, the baker on the right now sees the endorsement that's in, the, in his mempool and say have received an endorsement from uh, this baker on the left. But the baker on the left also sees his own endorsement. But there's no way for Mitten to observe the communication between the baker and the node, and this is actually an important part of tender bake. So we've added an RPC proxy to Mitten, which basically make Mitten uh, able to observe uh, messages that are sent between the baker and his node. So in this case we will see injection of blocks or operations that are go from the baker to Mitten and then to the prevalidator or we will we'll also be to observe operations that the baker gets from his own mempool and so we will be able to block a specific operation. So we, for instance we will be able to block a baker from seeing his own operation, which should not happen in practice, but sometimes we want to do that, or we want to observe them at least. And this is what we can do if we set filter on message equal true in the scenario. So here we are looking at the internals of Mitten a little bit. So Mitten essentially is a, a box for playing scenarios that I showed before. So there's a specific tab to describe uh, scenario messages. Uh, this box also contains everything that performs the matching on the messages, the ordering, interleaving, that runs the checks, and that also runs the actual scenario. And this is parameterized by the name engine, which provides a type for actual messages and, conver and the conversion to uh, the scenario messages. And this engine also provides the primitives to do the actual message forwarding. So there are two, two engines right now in Mitten. The first one being a proxy a sandbox engine, where the messages are either RPC messages, RPC requests and bodies, or P2P messages, which contain a message from the distributed database of Tezos that are exchanged between the nodes. Uh, the forwarding of messages is just a big wrapper around the, the same function of the P2P network. So if we want to send a message, we're basically just sending a message on the peer-to-peer -peer network to the destination. The mockup engine, on the other end, um, is used if we don't want to spawn a whole network, but we want to test a smaller scenario where uh, we're not running the full, the full node or the full baker. Uh, we are actually simulating the, 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 the way they work inside a the, inside the single process. And so this reuses part of the mockup simulator and the mockup client of Tezos. Uh, and in this case, the, the type of message is either a mockup block, so it's a block with the operation all bundled, bundled in the same place, or it can be also a packed operation, which will, will contain the, um, the consensus message. The forwarding is a special, special um, 
primitive of this mockup, which is called broadcast. So we have a way to broadcast messages from uh, a baker to another one directly. Uh, the interface exposed by the scenario player is a way to initialize the scenario with a special uh, state for the engine. So this is also provided by the engine. And there's this run function which uh, takes a message and then gives us a result. So either continue with the, the running of the scenario, uh, perform a special kind of forwarding action. So this is uh, what, the, what the engine will do. Or you can stop with this given error uh, written code. In the proxy, Run is called every time Mitten sees a message that comes from one of the nodes. In the mockup, run is called uh, every time we inject a new block or every time we inject a new operation. There's an extensive doc documentation that is available online at this address, or you can also uh, browse it and uh, the repository directly. So Mitten is, uh, is in the sources of Tezos. Uh, so this describes uh, some of the stuff that I've, that I've talked about and more. Uh, so, for instance, there's a small tutorial also. I have another scenario example, which is a bit more involved. Uh, in this case, this is a scenario of a baker which is not participating in round 1 because it observed the PQC, which stands for pre anderson core on the previous round 0, but on a different payload. The issue comes from the fact that uh, we don't observe core events on proposal that we do not pre -enders. So, the automaton works in a way that it must first observe the pre anderson core and then moves on to the, next, uh, to the next state where we actually wait for the endorsement quorum to be reached and then move on to the, to the next uh, next block. So the scenario allows this problem. Uh, so this is one scenario that uh, can showcase this problem. So we have B3 that proposes a block at uh, level 310 with payload hash C1 to all the other ones. But only B1 sees the PQC of this block. So and to do this, we simply dis discard all pre endorsement messages to B2, B3, B4. So here, only B1 received all pre endorsements And now B4 proposes that at round 1, sorry, round 1 is of uh, level 3 because it did not see the, the, the pre endorsement quorum and the endorsement quorum. So all messages now are forwarded to everybody, which is the uh, endorsement quorum, so this is EQC, on C2, except for B1 because B1 uh, will not look for this endorsement quorum even though it receives the 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 endorsement from the other nodes. And in our scenario, B1 happens to be the producer, uh, the proposer of uh, level 4 round 0, but it cannot propose here because it did not see the endorsement column. I said we have a scenario that uh, can showcase that, that, that will show. Uh, so let's uh, check uh, this. Okay, so it's the same, uh, it begins the same way. We have four uh, nodes and bakers. So here the nodes, they, are, they have no, no drifts. The parameters they give the delegate selection. So in particular, uh, at round three, sorry, at level three, uh, round uh, zero is for B three, round uh, one is for B four, and so on. And at level four, so this is the important part. The round zero is for B one. The committee here is composed of uh, four votes and uh, the quorum is reached every time we have uh, three out of those four votes. So this is a traditional tender base setting where we have must have two thirds of the votes to move on to the next phase. The rounds uh, last two seconds. Uh, there's uh, some shortcuts for the levels if we don't want to rewrite them all the time. Uh, there's this uh, reference which basically will be set to true once we see a proposal at level 4 and round 0 and the scenario goes this way so we are first waiting for a, a proposal from B3 at level 3 round 0 uh, to B1, B2 and B4 and in the meantime we forward everything that's uh, not a pre endorsement and an endorsement at level 3 this is what this uh, sort of diamond diamond shape uh, symbol and uh, question mark means so it means uh, wait for this and uh, don't forward this uh, now we wait for a proposal from B4 at level 3, round 1, uh, 2B2, B3, and B1. And we forward pre endorsements at level 3, round 0, only to B1. And we also forward pre endorsement from B1. Um, so the other, which means that we, so we effectively preventing the other nodes from seeing this pre endorsement core. We have an additional check here to ensure that um, 
the proposal in in round one is with a different payload than the one that we have seen on the round zero. So here we just looked at the content of variable C1 and C2 and checked that they do not contain the same thing. Uh, now we want to see an announcement from B1 uh, at level 3 and round zero, which means that uh, B1 has actually seen a pre announcement column so that it pro now proposes, uh, sorry, it now endorses. And now uh, we're waiting from for the proposal of B1 at level 4 and round 0. And if we see that, then we win, basically. We say we've uh, seen the proposal, we set this variable to true, and we exit. Otherwise, we are waiting to see if we reach level 5. So if we reach level 5, we first. And the at the end, we check if we've seen this proposal at uh, level three, 4, round 0. We have a global invariant of the system that we add and which is basically just to make sure that uh, this scenario is actually going the way we wanted it to go. And we say every time there's a message that uh, goes through, and if it's a consensus operation where it's actually an endorsement, then um, the content of this uh, consensus message must... Uh, so when, when it is uh, at level 3 and round 0, then the signer must be B1. So it means that uh, all endorsements um, at level 3 round 0 must be signed by B1. So it's all the, the only signer for this, uh, this endorsement. This is how we pack everything in the scenario, uh, record. We have this environment and then we call the, the run scenario function, which I will do now. So here it's the same thing, it's starting the, the network. So we can see uh, here, uh, uh, every, the, so the, the, the consensus is going well at the beginning. So everybody reaches consensus at level two. And then we move on to level three, where we reach consensus, but uh, only after a while. And then, unfortunately, we, sh we see at the end that we are reaching level five, uh, because the consensus has been reached on uh, level four, round one. And so, in the end, that uh, we see that uh, the proposal at round one was indeed with a different payload. We checked that only B1 has observed the PQC on uh, level 310, but unfortunately, we did not see this proposal at uh, level 410. So, this is uh, due to, uh, I mean, this can be fixed with a small optimization that we've, uh, we've done in the, in the protocol. So as future work, uh, there are a lot of ex extensions that we can think of uh, for Mitten. So Mitten is, is built to be generic, so the, the scenario language, right now it's tailored to this notion of uh, pre-endorsement and uh, endorsement message, but we can imagine that we could plug a a any any message, uh, any basic message, elementary message that we want to, to do. Uh, so we want to reuse this proxy on other networks. We also want to simulate Byzantine uh, behaviors. So in this case, what we've seen is examples of a scenario where everything goes as expected. We don't have a Byzantine uh, actors, so we want to add that at some point. Um, we want to also maybe use Mitten or extend it to monitor uh, the network and check the traces with respect to the TLA automata. So for instance, we can say we want to make sure that every run that the network takes is actually a, a valid uh, run of the automata, which would basically confirm that everything is going as expected. So this would be a uh, sort of a monitoring tool for the for the bakers to make sure that the the consensus uh, progresses as, is, as it should. So it's a way to raise alarm early. We want to have a higher level DSL so that it's easier to write uh, the smaller stuff. And we also want to be able to replay traces generated by the model shakers that, as I've uh, described before. So this is it for the, the this talk. If you have any question, do not hesitate to ask them and if you want to try Mitten on your own, you are welcome to do so. If you have questions, you can of course send, a, send them to us and we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Alain, for the presentation. So let's have a look at our question in chat.
So the, 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 today is a question which is, um, could you please tell how negation is handled and because of a negation uh, of a sequence of steps means exponential explosion, right? Can you say a word about that? Yes. Uh, so um, actually a sequence of steps is, is the, so it's, it's a sequence on the way it's, uh, the, the messages are propagated, but it's more a conjunction on, on the way the messages are matched. Which means if I have a, a step one, step two, and step three, then I can uh, observe a step three before step two or before step one. And so, if I want to see the observe the negation of uh, this sequence of events, it's basically the same thing as observing the the, the negation of the the conjunction of S one, S two, S three. So, if I observe S two, I say that it's, uh, this conjunction, uh, sorry, this uh, sequence is. Uh, is, uh, is not matched. So if I have a step uh, step four that, 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 that do not match uh, uh, any of these steps, then it's uh, it's uh, a message that matches the negation. Uh, so I did not show the, um, the reduction words, but there is a so in, in implementation is quite uh, straightforward once you've uh, thought about it. So basically, there's a of a, a function that performs the reduction when you have a step and you see a message and what is the new step that you get uh, after that. Okay. Uh, okay, so please do not hesitate to, to ask your question directly on the on the chat. Uh, so so I, I, I have uh, one, one question, which is, um, so su suppose I, uh, I'm making some modification in terms of back. And uh, what, what would be the necessary to, to modify, to, uh, to change in emit and to test this new version of, of Thunderbeck? Is it easy or not? Easy or not? So it, it depends on the kind of uh, changes that you make, but uh, it's, uh, so if it's, if it's uh, changes that do not impact the, let's say the messages or the way the, the messages are exchanged, then there's nothing basically to do with the, uh, to do for me tend to work on the new consensus protocol we work the same way mm. uh, actually we make change uh, all the time to tend the bag to tweak a little thing but it does not change the, the shape of messages so it's, it's working fine this way uh, if we want to add new messages or change the safe shape of messages then we have to change the way uh, we pass the the, the messages and uh, the, the elementary messages uh, the elementary steps also uh, and that, that would be the only change required. And then if we send a note on the break, is a completely different consensus algorithm and with, where the communication primitives is completely different, then we have to change a bit the, 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 the engine that does the, that, that is actually responsible for doing the proxy. And stuff. Okay, so uh, three, I, I had this, uh, this second question, which, which, which is that, yes, uh, so how, how to, is it possible to use uh, MITEN for other consensus protocols, for instance? Uh, or or even other systems, other system, other, other distributed system. Yeah. yeah. Yes. For, so, so I think the, the important part that that we can keep for Mitten in all these uh, other use cases is the the scenario language and the the the, the engine that performs the matching on the, the messages and uh, the, the execution of the scenario. Uh, if if we have a, another system, let's say uh, that that communicates through. Uh, TCP uh, sockets, then we can reuse uh, part of the proxy. If it's completely different um, uh, communication mechanism and protocol, then we have to re-implement basically the, the, the proxy part. Mm -hmm. And also we have uh, to implement a way to, to pass the the, uh, the message, to observe the message and to uh, forward them. So in some cases, this can include, uh, for instance, uh, decrypting the message or re-encrypting re them. So it can be, uh, so it really depends on the system, but it's, I think it's possible. Okay. And it, uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so we have another question in the in the chat. So uh, you have mentioned that we can try Mitten. Uh, is it publicly available? Yes. So it's publicly available in the um, in the in the in the repository of Tezos. So there's a there's a so it's not a it's, I don't think it's in the master branch but there's a branch for which has Mitten. So the, the plan is to have a, so it's not yet uh, uh, integrated in master uh, because the, the plan is to have uh, Mitten run on the CI uh, every time there's a new basically a new uh, merge request or a new change uh, that, that goes uh, in the in the Tezos uh, protocol. 
uh, but uh, it should should be merged soon. So uh, you can al already uh, use it with the uh, either. So you you can use Mitten either with the uh, tender bake version to the it's called the Itaca protocol of Tezos. So you can use it here, or you can also use uh, Mitten on the development version of Tezos, which which is called the Alpha protocol. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and what about the, the documentation? So you mentioned a link to uh, the documentation and a tutorial during the talk. Could you pass the link somewhere? So it would be cool to... Yes, yes. Ah, so we, uh, yeah, we can read that. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, and there was a, another question. Maybe you already answered it, I don't know. But is there a way to leverage Mitten to test non-deterministic system? So is there something... Uh, is there an issue with so non-deterministic Yeah, so I guess it depends what you mean by uh, non-deterministic systems. So I would say a consensus protocol is a little bit non-deterministic because the, I mean, the non-determinism can come from a lot of factors. So the, the network has a big impact. Uh, the, the machine on which you run the, 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 the bakers uh, and the nodes have, have a big impact also. So this is all stuff that you cannot control and that contribute to the non-determinism. So this asynchronous system, there are all all uh, uh, non-deterministic and it's uh, mm -hmm. actually what uh, what we can do. Yes, so, so the, the scenario that you are uh, describing using your DSL are somehow non-deterministic, no? In some sense. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, I mean, so you, so yes, they are non-deterministic, which means that uh, they, they, they can capture non-deterministic behaviors of the, the systems. Mm. Uh, But uh, so, I mean, there's a underlying question that uh, which would be, uh, I guess, uh, how do you write the scenarios so that you are able to better test these non-deterministic systems? So you write that in some cases you can have um, systems, or, I mean, you can have a scenario where uh, depending on how you run the system, uh, then you can either uh, follow the scenario or you reach a step where you cannot follow the, the scenario. And uh, but due to non determinism, so this so if, if, if you want to observe a, a particular series of steps and you basically describe the scenario with all the messages that, that you want to observe, then this is I mean, what I would consider a, a fragile pattern for writing the scenarios because this is not uh, resistant to small variations. So there's a sort of a, what I would call a scenario engineering when you write the scenario where you want to be as generic as possible. And, uh, and you, you, you can have uh, this kind of uh, uh, well, scenario that captures the most behaviors that you want to test. Okay. So, so yeah, so, uh, so if a node or baker can react non-deterministically to a message input, so to be more, to have more detail about the, the, the last question. So, yes, so that, that, that doesn't change um, something. That, does it change something if, You want to uh, to test uh, so a system where node or baker can react non-deterministically. Is, is, is so uh, so the bakers in, uh, in Tezos they react uh, yeah. deterministically, no, really. but it can yeah, but it can happen that uh, you want to test a system where these these, uh, these actors uh, are not deterministic. Uh, I mean, they, yeah. let's say they don't follow uh, an automaton. Uh, well, Mitten has no uh, knowledge of how the, the system is implemented, it just observes the communication. So from its point of view, everything is non-deterministic, so it can uh, mm -hmm. work with non-deterministic system. So if you have a system where you have uh, too much non-determinism, then it can happen that it's a system that will exhibit uh, uh, very, very I mean, uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, different behaviors for the same input. And in this case, it would be maybe harder to write uh, the scenario that captures all the behaviors you want to observe. Okay. Um, so maybe uh, another one, which is, uh, could I use uh, Mitten for real-time monitoring? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, so the, I mean, so you can use Mitten. So uh, what I showed here is, is a way to use Mitten to for testing and for uh, uh, playing scenarios that, uh, that we have developed either by uh, thinking about them and writing on board and with the consensus algorithm. But because Mitten is, uh, is in its core, it's a, it's a proxy in between all these uh, communicating machines, then you can use Mitten to, um, to also just uh, print the, 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 
the messages that are exchanged on the network and showing basically you, you can have a log of what's happening on the network and uh, maybe you can also have a, a me 10 sort of uh, be a monitor that can raise alarms depending on the different uh, behaviors so if me 10 has a knowledge of let's say thunderbake and knows about the the, the automaton of thunderbake he can he can uh, see the messages exchanged on the network and and uh, uh, can say if if uh, this sequence of messages uh, is uh, accepted by the automaton, and if, if it sees something that really goes uh, out of the automaton, you can raise an alarm and say, okay, something something weird here. Weird here. What I mean can, but it, what, I, what, what I mean uh, is that uh, uh, we could do that if we uh, instrument it to um, to actually understand the Tenderbake protocol. Okay. Uh, so, uh, can I trust Mitten? <laughs> With Mitten, and, and when, uh, so yes, can I trust it or not? So, what do you mean, uh, trust it? Uh, well, so if Mitten uh, tells that uh, the protocol is safe, uh, is it really safe? I mean, I have a, I have, I have a scenario and something, well, everything is, is okay for Mitten, so can, what, what can I conclude? So uh, it depends on what you're uh, testing with Mitten. So if, if you are testing a particular uh, behavior, uh, so this is something, for instance, that we've done. We've, we've, uh, we've uh, found something that's uh, strange, so we write a scenario for it, and then we tweak the scenario because we are uh, actually finding a bug, and it's okay, we say that's the property we want to check. Uh, if, if you're writing the, the, the scenario and the property, uh, in such a way that you can uh, basically be confident that uh, this, this captures this behavior. Uh, then when you make a fix, and so you can basically use this um, scenario as a non duplication test for, for your test suite, and then you can hope that this will not be triggered uh, uh, again. And you can hope that if you reintroduce the bug later on, then this will be uh, caught, uh, caught, yes. But you cannot have the guarantee that uh, uh, this bug cannot be cannot manifest itself with some other scenario. So I mean, no, no, a, a bug in Thunderbolt, you mean? But yes. but what about the just Mitten? I mean, if I have a scenario, how can you be sure that Mitten is going to play the scenario as, uh, as it is? Uh, I say, uh, yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, stop the message from <laughs> Baker B one. Uh, so yeah, so so I, I mean, yeah, yeah, so Mitten is you, just uh, ready to do that. Yeah, so I mean, you could uh, look at the trace from Mitten, for instance, and see if it's okay. actually an actual trace from the scenario. So that is something you can verify uh, a posteriori. Okay. Uh, so this, this is possible. Uh, Just to see if, yes, if Mitten uh, has played the scenario as I, as I expected. Yes, yes, so, yes, so you, can, you can do that. Um, yeah. But for instance, Mitten will not uh, send messages to bakers if it did not uh, come from someone else with just forwarding messages. So, you can be confident that uh, Mitten will not invent messages. Message yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so there was a preview still unanswered question from Zaina. So, what changes would be necessary to test consensus protocols of other systems? Would you please comment on that? Oh, this is the. This is, I think it's the same question that you asked. I think so. I think I already uh, asked the question. Yeah. But okay. So you already answered that. I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, uh, so of course, designing a scenario is uh, is not uh, an easy task. So, um, so one possibility would, would be to 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 extract those scenarios from some models uh, written in some uh, uh, model checker. And so, uh, do can, can you say how hard it would would it be to translate error traces from a model checker to a to a meet and scenario, so yeah. So we uh, we have a, a, a model from uh, of Thunderbolt in TLA, for instance. Uh, yes. Could you say a word about how how hard it could be to, to translate? Yeah. So actually, the the, the, the work on meet and started uh, after we we worked on the implementation in uh, on the specification in TLA. Uh, it was for 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 us a way to. Uh, to easily uh, test scenarios that come up uh, when you design these models. Um, and uh, I guess it, it depends how the model is written. So uh, in our case, in TLA, the, the, the model is sort of fits nicely with the way it handles the messages. 
because you can see uh, the, the sending of messages as being basically a, tra a transition in the model. And so when you would get a trace from uh, the model checker of TLA, uh, let's say TLC, you get a trace that mentions uh, the transitions. And so this would be a trace basically that is easily um, transposable in terms of uh, message passing. Mm -hmm. So if you have the the the, 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 sorry, the, the the model that's written in a completely different way that does not really match the exchange of messages, or if you make some assumptions, or if you hide some details be behind uh, another uh, layer of abstraction, then uh, it may be the case that it's not easily uh, transferable to Newton. But in the case of TLA, we found that it, it would be uh, possible to do to do it. Okay, but this is, this is still future, right? This is something we want mm -hmm. to do, and we have time to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what would be re required to make Newton work for the particular distributed system that is a smart contract? Uh, for instance, on the, on the Tezos blockchain, so it's like, um, at a higher level, in a, some sense. So, I mean, I'm not sure uh, Mitten would be the right tool to uh, to, uh, to test, uh, let's say, uh, a, a smart contract. Uh, because you can, so, I mean, when, you, when you reason about the smart contract, I think you can get rid of the... Of the not the non-determinism, but you can get rid of all this uh, communication system, uh, sorry, this communication layer, and uh, it's a really uh, uh, a closed system where uh, basically uh, you can look at the, the evolution of the state of the smart contract with uh, transitions, and the transition in this case would be transactions. So it would, so I think it would be a more um, uh, um, an example that can be tested more easily with a, a model checker, for instance. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to agree. <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 maybe it's Mitten is a, would, would be a good way to to test uh, to test smart contracts. So I think so. I mean, should, I mean, if I have a smart contract that I don't know uh, implement some some services and and uh, I can easily describe a, a scenario for. For, for this uh, smart contract. Yes, okay, okay, yes, uh, okay, I see what I don't know why Mitten would, uh, to me, Mitten could be very useful to, to, to play the scenario I, I want to play for this particular smart contract, no? So, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, okay, I understand. So, if you mean the, the, the exchanges of, uh, sorry, if you mean the, the, the scenario, the, the way to describe the scenarios in terms of the scenario language, yeah. like, then yes, yes, it could be yeah. useful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Mm, do you have strategies to cover most of uh, a protocol with a minimum set of scenarios? Um, <laughs> there's, there's no strategies really. Uh, so we, we can. So in Tezos, there's a way to um, basically to, to run the Tezos uh, to instrument the Tezos binaries. So this includes, uh, for instance, the node, the baker, and so on, so that they produce uh, co coverage traces. And because here we are running the, um, the actual nodes and the bakers, we can instrument them at compilation time uh, to tell them to produce these uh, coverage traces. So for instance, we can have a scenario and then run the scenario and obtain uh, something that tells us uh, this scenario actually covers this part of the code and so on. So we can have some confidence in, in the way in, in a way that, that says we've covered most of these uh, critical paths in both the bakers and uh, the, the, the code of the protocol. Okay, so uh, maybe the last one. Did the persons who created Mitten require advanced knowledge of the consensus protocol? And uh, would it have been possible to create Mitten given only high level or partial knowledge of this algorithm? Uh, so I, yeah, I think, so. okay, so to, to answer the first question, um, so the, the person that created Mitten, so it was a, uh, Mostly uh, us. So actually, uh, Mitten was created uh, by uh, by everyone at uh, Functory. So I'm, I'm the main contributor, but I, actually everyone has contributed uh, some part at least in, in Mitten. Uh, and some of us are uh, are experts in the in, in the Tenderbay consensus protocol, but uh, uh, others are not. Uh, and the, so the conception uh, of I mean the need for for the Mitten came from the, the, the knowledge of Tenderbeck, 
but uh, someone could have thought about it without uh, uh, knowing about Thunder Bay. Uh, mm. still, we would still need to know uh, how um, uh, the, the message I exchange in uh, uh, in Tezos so to know a little bit what is a, uh, a consensus protocol, but there's no really uh, uh, a deep understanding of Thunder Bay that is required to, uh, to build Mitten. Now, if you're talking about uh, uh, writing scenarios, then it's another story, because if you want to write good scenarios, of course, you have to sort of understand the, uh, the, yeah. you have to understand the protocol. OK. Uh, and so by the way, how many people are working on Mitten? So uh, yeah, I just uh, said it's uh, yeah every so it's five people actually that five we people, yeah so five okay. people okay good okay uh, so I don't think there is no other question in the chat no that's okay so again uh, thank you very much uh, Alain for sharing uh, your knowledge with us and uh, so thanks you to the audience for thank you thank you for having me okay. So goodbye. See you at the next session. Bye. Bye-bye.